We do understand at this hour it is a fluid and developing story. It appears at this moment that the Israeli attack against Iran is ongoing. I spoke this evening with a senior official who gave us some context into the days leading up to this highly anticipated Israeli strike against Iranian territory. This strike, according to this senior official, was meant to send a message of deterrence to the Iranian regime. And there was communication with the Americans beforehand as the region waits to see what will come next. But again, the latest information that we have, multiple explosions have been reported in and around the Iranian capital of Tehran, as well as in the northern part of Iran. We don't know the exact targets, but I am told that some of the targets were taken off the list following American pressure. There have been a lot of conversations taking place with top Israeli leadership here in Tel Aviv and in Jerusalem talking with their counterparts in Washington to determine how to deter the Iranians but not drag the region into a broader war. Now, one other important note here. An Israeli official tells me the expectation is that following the strikes tonight against Iran, there will be some sort of response. Of course, they don't know what that response will look like, but Israeli air defense remains on high alert across this country. There is an understanding that Iran has the ability to target Israel with a variety of ballistic missiles, as they did earlier this month when they launched 180 of them toward this country. And so Israel's top defense systems, including the Aero 2 and 3 systems, do remain on alert to be able to protect some of the more sensitive targets across this country. Jason. Trey, let's go back to what really led to this, because uh, there was anticipated going to be some response by the Israelis. Is this purely a missile attack? Are there fighter jets over Iranian space at this time? Do you know uh, the details of how this attack is taking place? I don't want to get into the details, just given how sensitive the information is and the fact that it's unfolding as we speak. But we have a lot of information. I've been talking with officials this evening and throughout the week in anticipation of this strike taking place. Remember, as we reported the past several weeks, this was not a question of if Israel would respond, but rather when and where. 180 ballistic missiles were fired by the Iranians, and everyone from top army generals to Israel's defense minister Yoav Gallant to the country's prime minister Benjamin Netanyahu made very clear that the Iranian attack against Israel was the regime in Tehran crossing a red line. The deterrence had been flipped and the Israelis wanted to re store that deterrence. And that is part of what they are doing with these strikes tonight against Iran, I am told. And again, we don't know exactly how widespread the strikes will be, and we don't know the exact targets. But we do know there has been communication with the Americans. Of course, there was the story of this leak earlier in the week and a real concern that the American leak could have damaged the Israeli preparations. I'm told that that did not affect the Israeli timeline to ultimately strike Iran. But it is, of course, of concern to Israeli officials as they continue to communicate with their American counterparts about the escalating tension across the region. Jason. Trey, Trey, to what degree is, is the United States of America uh, partnering with Israel on this attack? Is it a support mechanism? Are there U.S. assets being deployed? Is there technology? Do we have any idea of what the U.S. involvement might be in this attack that's going on right now tonight? Yeah, so I asked a senior official this very question tonight, and the extent at which they would describe the coordination was simply communication with the Americans. There is an understanding that they don't want to send a message that the United States is directly involved in any of these attacks, despite the fact that behind the scenes they may be sharing things like intelligence. And we do know, of course, that the Americans have helped the Israelis to prepare for possible Iranian retaliation to the strikes that are currently taking place, Jason, as we speak. Remember earlier in the week, and it really all sort of blends together for the officials here who are continuing to fight a war, not just on the ground inside Gaza against Iranian proxies like Hamas and Islamic Jihad, but also against Iran's largest proxy in the region, Hezbollah, in southern Lebanon. And the Americans deployed the THAAD anti-ballistic missile system to Israel. And there are less than 10 of these systems deployed around the world. So the fact that one was sent to Israel with American boots on the ground to make sure the system was manned and working 
was an indication that the Americans understood, like the Israelis, that Iran would likely respond in some capacity to this counterattack following the ballistic missile attack earlier this month. But remember, this was not the first Iranian attack that took place this year. Back in April, the Iranians launched an attack after the Israelis targeted the building next to their embassy in Damascus, Syria. And remember, when we look at the reason that the Iranians say they launched the ballistic missiles against Israel earlier this month, they said it was in response to the killing of Hassan Nasrallah, the secretary general of Hezbollah, Iran's largest proxy across the Middle East, a group that has been directly involved in conflict with Israel since October 8th. We know that the Iranians say it was not just in response to the death of Nasrallah, the strike that took place in the Lebanese capital of Beirut, but also the explosion that killed the leader of Hamas, Ismail Haniyeh, in Tehran over the summer. It was an embarrassment for the Iranians to have a top proxy leader killed at a guest house in the Iranian capital of Tehran while he was attending the inauguration ceremonies for Masoud Pazeskian, the new Iranian president. And so this was a joint response from the Iranians earlier this month. And that 180 ballistic missile attack that soared through the skies of this country. We were in the northern city of Haifa when that attack took place. And you could see some of these missiles coming in over Syria. And some of them, actually, we understand more than half of them hit Israel. They were not intercepted. And you saw the craters across this country near to military bases and actually targeting military bases where Israeli jets take off from. And the Israelis saw this as, again, crossing a red line for the Iranian regime. And so that is why we had been told in the briefings and the conversations that we've been having with top officials here in Tel Aviv that this was not a question of if Israel would respond, but rather when and where. And as we understand tonight, Israel is striking Iran. Multiple explosions have been reported in and around the Iranian capital of Tehran, as well as further north. And we do not know at this hour what exactly is being targeted, but Iranian state media is also confirming that these explosions have taken place. Again, an indication Israel has started their attack against Iran.